Hello everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is episode 122 and this is a crochet, knitting, sewing, crafty kind of podcast where I talk about those things, the things I make. Um, you will find the show notes for this podcast on my website which is cherryheart.co.uk that's where I list the uh, things that I talk about, the patterns, the yarns, relevant information, things like that so that's a great place to look for information and I'll pop the link to that just in the down bar below the video. I will also have timestamps for this video which will enable you to jump from spot to spot um, to the areas of the video you are most interested in. So you can either use your mouse to hover along the bottom here and just select the chapters or you can go into the down bar below and just click on one of the uh, segments listed. And last of all you will find me on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. That's where I am mostly and elsewhere around the web I tend to be known as Cherry Heart. So how are you? I hope you've been keeping well. I hope you've found some nice crafty moments in the last few weeks. Um, it's a little bit grey here today. It's definitely taken an autumn, autumnal turn. Um, yeah, it's got quite cold, especially this week. So it feels like quite a sharp change. Um, at first it just cooled and that was lovely. And now it's feeling, it feels actually quite chilly. Um, so it's good for working on blanket products, products, projects even. Um, so yeah, I've been trying to work on those because I've got a couple of big ones. So I was going to podcast last week. That's when um, I was sort of scheduled to do it. I try and podcast every other week. Not that you would know it from the last however long's showing, but um, that was that's the original aim. Um, but yeah, I just didn't have a lot to show last week. There wasn't really any much tangible progress. So I've got a little bit more this week. So I'll show you what I've got. Um, where to begin? The first thing I'll talk about, I think, is the crochet star quilt. So last time we spoke, if you were here last time, that is, um, and if you were, thank you for coming back. And if you weren't, well, let me fill you in. Thanks for trying the video out, by the way. Okay, so this is my crochet star quilt. So I had all my blocks ready to join and I have joined them. So here it is. Now I'm not gonna try and attempt to show you the whole thing at the minute. I'm gonna save that for when I've finished for the big final ta-da reveal. But, um, I have joined them all and I have done my last row of sort of sashing squares. So on each block I had, I've got the star in the middle and then I had a row of squares on two of the sides. So as I've joined them together that's created rows of sort of um, just plain white blocks um, between the stars. So all I had to do at the end was go along and finish sort of another um, row and column of the white squares just to kind of fill in do you know what I mean because they were only on that side because they were on that side of every block that was fine and it filled in that edge and that bottom so I had to go in and do the top I don't know if I've explained that in any kind of coherent way but so now I've been thinking about the border or been trying to think about the border so I've got this kind of mess of experiments and ends going on here which I'm going to attempt to show you everything's still attached to a yarn colour because I don't want to snip and break the yarn I'll unravel once I know what I'm doing I'll unravel it and just you know use it properly so border contenders you can help me here give me some feedback let me know what you think of these ideas what I'm going for for the border is essentially something quite simple. Um, I'm thinking if it was a real quilt, a fabric quilt, it would just have the thin sort of binding border. So I'm kind of aiming for something like that maybe. I don't want to get into anything sort of frilly or sort of lace worky or anything like that because I don't think it will suit it. So I think it does need to be quite plain. 
So the first thing I thought was to incorporate all the colours. So this is quite a cute border. I do quite like this. Actually seeing it on the camera I like it more. I haven't quite got the tension right. I discovered when I was making my um, extra little edging of white squares I picked up the wrong hook. I've been using the 3 mil hook throughout and I picked up my 3.5 and I did a whole side or nearly a whole side of squares in the 3.5 so they're slightly bigger so I think that's thrown my tension off here so I'm going to have to do some jiggery pokery to get that back because there's no way I'm taking all those squares off and doing them again. No way Jose. Um, yeah but I don't like the way that's curling even without even on this side where the tension is better it's still curling a lot so I don't like that at all and I know I can block it but I'm just slightly worried that even if I block it will lie flat to a bit and it will want to it will want to curl up again so that puts me off that slightly so all I've done here is rows of DC's um, UK DC's that is so US singles and I've alternated white colour white colour white colour and then I finished with a reverse DC or crab stitch um, for that last row so I do like that I also think the sort of stripes of colour look a little bit like an 80s sweatband so I'm not sure how I feel about that being on my nice <laughs> crochet quilt but I kind of like that it incorporates all the colours that's quite nice but yeah, I think there's problems with that. I'm definitely not enjoying that curling. So that was one. Then I went for just a plain, completely plain row of um, trebles. So I did, um, I think I did a white round of just uh, UK doubles, US singles. And then I just did a, swapped to the pink and did a row of UK trebles. And then I think I've done doubles again in the top. So to be honest, I really quite like that just as a very plain, simple edge. The only problem with going for one colour is I don't know what colour to go for. I think I want a colour other than just white because I think if I do it very plain and it's just white, it will get completely lost. But inevitably, whichever colour you choose for the border then kind of enhances that colour in the blanket and makes that the dominant colour because I've got it quite even up till now so adding it in the border will sort of bring one of them forward I think so yeah I quite like that but it seems it seems a little bit plain and really nothing going on so uh, excuse me I'm talking I have to wait for Mr next door to go in his house now because the dogs the dog is kicking off I will attempt to continue so where were we so trial number three after trying the very plain one I thought I'll try something with a bit of texture so this is puff stitches um, which I've interspersed I think I just did one treble one puff stitch one treble one puff stitch um, and then a row of DC's to finish so again I quite like that it is going to use a lot of yarn if I do that though. <laughs> I think the grey I will probably have enough. I've got nearly a whole skein of that or a whole hank of that. Um, but I think it would it would definitely be a grey border in that case because that's the only one I've got enough of. But I think that might be a good choice. I think the grey is sort of like the most neutral colour. So that might be quite a good choice. I don't know, that looks really quite nice here on the camera I talked to myself out of this looking at it in person it just looked a bit too textural compared to the sort of the rest of the blanket so yeah it's very hard to imagine from the little corner how it's going to look on mass see maybe if I stood back and had the whole thing it would look such a little bit of the whole thing it would be all right I don't know I'm slightly worried because it's not a very fluffy sort of plumpy yarn I think it's a merino and nylon it's quite a sock yarn the puffs sort of look a little bit stringy and I'm kind of worried because it's a blanket that easily those little strands will easily get caught and get pulled 
so I'm just wondering if that's the most practical choice although I do quite like it and then my last attempt is even more of a smaller bit to show you because I was trying different things so my last attempt again it's on the corner that's got the dodgy tension that I thought I'd sorted out but haven't entirely <laughs> right so this is what I've got so again it's a very plain but I've done sort of I don't know if you can see what's happening there see how close so I've got spike stitches going in basically so I did quite a few rounds of just drop double crochets so UK single crochets I think I did four maybe five and then I did a spike stitch into one of the lower crochets and brought it up and I quite like that it gives it because it's both sides if I show you the back it almost gives it like a sort of zigzag stitch effect doesn't it um, but yeah it sort of gives it like a little bit of thickness and weight to that border just a little bit without it being as really textured and bulky it is the most like a um, quilt binding I thought I've tried a bit in grey as well and I was messing around with sort of doing a one spike there and this one I've done two so it gives it a thicker and the colour the colour is thicker so it looks more prominent I don't know if you can tell the difference so it's one spike up to about there and then I changed to two spikes and um, the only trouble with doing the two spikes is I'm putting more yarn in and that's messing with the tension again so yeah so I really quite like this I like how much it looks like binding I like that it gets a sort of a bit of thickness and a bit of weight in the border I just wonder if it's just too tiny and too plain for the whole of this quilt it's the only thing that concerns me I mean I suppose effectively I've already got a kind of a border with this extra row of white squares round so the star ends there and I've got almost like a border inlay and then that would just be the very edge I'm just not 100% convinced that this is my choice although in some ways I think it's the best option I don't know it almost feels too minimal even though I said I wanted minimal fickle 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 creature I don't know what do you think would you go for one of these ones would you try something else entirely would you go fancier would you keep it plain I don't know let me know what you think and hopefully that will help me make up my mind because I'm a bit on the fence about it in the moment and I don't know which way to go and I can't finish it until I decide so I need to decide um, right let's pop that thing out of the way it's quite a heavy beast to manhandle now so this is a sewing thing if you were here many many moons ago you might have seen me talk well not many many moons ago but it just means this is a another slow project I've had on the go for a while but um I had li Liberty hexagons I was going to make a piece of fabric out of um, with joining Liberty hexagons together to make a knitting needle case so I finally joined all of my hexagons together and made this little bit of rainbow loveliness can't see how much that's on the screen there we go so I had all kinds of different colors and last time I spoke about it I think I showed you all these little strips so I decided I would range them in rainbow strips of color so that was very pretty and then I finally joined them together I've taken the backs out as well so that's it the backs which is also quite pretty um, so now I finally, finally have a piece of fabric which I can make my needle case out of. So it's not finished, but this sort of stage is finished and that feels like a bit of an achievement. So now I've actually just got to get round to getting up to the sewing machine and doing some sewing, which I haven't done for quite some time, I have to say. 
So that's the closest thing to a finished object. Um, what else can I tell you about? So this is another thing that's been on the podcast before, which is my Daisy Puff blanket. So my Daisy Puff hexagons. I don't know how far I'd got last time. I'm not sure that this little bit has grown that much, to be honest. Probably not. Um, no, I think that's probably about the same, I guess. Will this be the right way up? I've tried to experiment. I'm working on my little filler hexagon. I think I've got it sorted out now. The half hexagon is sorted. Hello, my daughter just rang um, and now I've come back. I have no idea what I was talking about before. I know I was talking about these, the Daisy Puffs hexagons, but I don't know what I told you. Um, but I know what I want to tell you. So that's what I've got for that so far. I don't think that's changed. But I did say I was going to do a tutorial for the hexagons, which I have now done. So how to make those motifs. And I've also done a tutorial um, for how I'm joining them. So I'm crocheting them through from the back, but I'm just doing that in a join as you go style. So it's, uh, I've called it the modular join. I came up with this idea when I was making my Battenberg blanket quite some time ago. And I just couldn't face making a billion tiny squares and joining them all afterwards as well. So I thought if I could join them as I go, that's really gonna cut down on my ends. So since I came up with that idea, I've sort of started it, applying it to so many other things. It's just makes life so much easier. So instead of weaving in the ends on each motif and then sort of because joining hexagons is always a bit awkward because you haven't got the straight lines have you so I guess you just join each one in a row and then you do a zigzag along but this way it's so much easier because you don't have all those extra joining ends and also um, because you're using the same colour on each motif you don't have like a awkward different colour yarn showing through so yeah it works really well for the hexagons, I think. I quite like that. So yeah, I've done a tutorial for how to join them as well. So that's two tutorials, but I've still got to edit them. So this one is nearly ready. So this one will probably be up first, how to make the little motif. And then I'll pop the joining one up um, once I've got that edited. So that might take me a day or two afterwards. So that's in progress. Oh, I'll tell you what, I have made a little bit of progress on the blanket because I've turned all my little jellyfish centres, my little flower centres. I've got all the next stage on, so they've all got their um, white borders on now. So now they just need their final finishing border and joining onto the blanket. So I'm prioritising kind of my bigger projects first to try and get some progress on them. But um, yeah, this is a nice little background one to sort of tick away on when I haven't got anything. You know when you just sit down in front of the telly and you just want something that you can pick up and get on with without having to think about? This is this project at the moment. So um, yeah, the yarn I'm using for this one is Starcraft Bambino and Bellissima, which is two different names for the same yarn so it's fine to mix and match them because it's actually the same stuff um but i do realize i'd picked up because most of the colors i had in stash i picked up um cream and i had this ball of you know just like a wound ball that i had left over and then i had a new ball of a cream and it um there's two different creams so in the Bellissima range there's I think it's single cream and in the Bambino range they've got a cream which I think is called clotted cream and to be honest when I saw them I could I couldn't really tell any difference between them and now I see these made up I don't know if you can tell but there's a patch here where they there is a different color I can actually tell now <laughs> I think I've got some here as well so there's a patch here and a few here they're in a slightly different shade of cream to these ones down here. So they are actually different. So if you're getting any creams 
make sure you just stick to one not like I did so obviously I ordered one I had one cream I got at one point and then I started ordering the other cream at a different point so yeah that's slightly annoying but I think once they've got the borders round they'll be separated out enough that you won't be able to tell I think I can only really tell here because they're right next to each other and I'm hoping I mean I can just about see it on the camera but I kind of I'm very aware of it so I don't know how much you can notice anyway I think you can tell I don't know let me know let me know if you can tell yeah there is, there is a difference but I'm not going to worry about that so these are yeah that's my kind of ticking along in the background project Oh, and when I am writing up a pattern as well people I wasn't sure if I did tutorials whether people would want a pattern as well like a written pattern um, but they um, have quite a few people said they did so I have started writing that up um, obviously I haven't finished it yet because I don't know how I'm going to finish my blanket yet same for this actually the star quilt people did ask me I did, I've done a tutorial for how to make the two colour squares um, and how I join them together to make the stars but people have also asked me for a written pattern for this which again I'm working on I've done quite well with my written pattern work um, but again I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it yet so I can't finish writing it up until I know what to write up so yeah so both of those are coming along nicely in the background but um, I need to make a bit more progress on the physical things before I can take the written pattern any further on those and then a project you haven't seen so this is something I'm making for my lovely niece and it's a garment so let's show you this it's a bit different it's not the usual sort of thing I would make but it is a request so that's why it's a bit different so black and white it's a monochrome that's why it's a bit different for me so I wouldn't you normally be drawn to such stark contrast of colors but I do quite like it though it is kind of bold isn't it so that's the front there's a sort of v-neck there I don't know if you can see that a little v-neck going on and then there's the back so I managed to get the main body of it all together so it's just going to be a little crop top we think this will be long enough we had a little try on test and we think this will do the job um what else was i going to say about it yeah i just need to do the edge it well i need to weave in these ends but i need to do the edging so i had um i kind of made it up as i went along so we knew I measured uh, her and I got some measurements but I wasn't quite sure how it would work out with because obviously you can only do certain sizes because you're restricted by the squares and also because it's a checkerboard you've got to keep the pattern so I made up a kind of a band round and then I sort of went up the height that I thought it would be right for a strap and I kind of just had those two bands which she tried on for me so we could get an idea if we was in the right ballpark which looked to be okay we had a few modifications I had to bring I had the um, what do you call it shoulder strap coming up closer to the edge and it was going to be hanging off her shoulders so we moved those in and we've got more of a shape on the arm now so I think this should be good um, yeah I need some edging obviously on the neck and the arms and the bottom I know that a try on would be ideal just to make sure I did I sort of constructed it all merrily away and I didn't do any of the ends at all until a few nights ago <laughs> and then I just sat and wove them all in I thought it was going to be an actual absolute nightmare but actually it wasn't too bad but I've just got yeah where I finished up the shaping around the neck I've just got a few more ends to get in now but yeah that's nearly finished so that's been quite a fun little project to work on actually and um, just sort of working out exactly how I was going to make it and I sort of added these kind of little half squares in to get a bit better shape which I was quite pleased with so it's not too 
angular and blocky um, yeah hopefully that works out all right so I'm using for this I have got um, it's a Starcraft special for both of these so that and I've got I think they are just called black and white so I've got yeah black is ooh, try to pull the label out without making a racket black which is a thousand and two and white which is a thousand and one so that was one ball of each I've started with that's what I've got left so far I did order a second white in case I needed it because I was doing the edging as well in white I think I will do um, but looking at how far I've got I don't think I'll need it so that's good um, yeah so hopefully next time that will be finished um, and hopefully I'll be have made more progress on my uh, little bits and pieces I'll have something more to show you but I have got one more thing actually which is incoming goodies so if you were here last time I was talking about my niece's small business that she started so that's the niece I'm making the little black and white top for and so it's a jewelry business and she uh, makes um, little clay designs and it's earrings mostly she does necklaces as well and I'll give you her business name by the way I'll put the details all up here so it's Rongu's Design and that's her website up there and I'll pop a link in as well for you in um, below anyway I was around the other day and she just was making a new batch of um, designs and I saw them I was like oh I would love these for stitch markers they'd be so good for that and she was like well what is a stitch marker <laughs> so I was kind of explaining and she was like oh well I could make you some of them so yeah she's made me some lovely stitch markers and she's popped some in the shop as well in case anyone else was interested um just it's good to try new things when you've got a little business isn't it and see what appeals to people so I'm going to put a photo in to show you because I haven't I just realized I brought them up here and I haven't got a way to show you them all together so I'm going to show you the autumn set first so that's here so we've got this lovely little acorn okay I'm just going to put this around so I can see yeah whether it's focusing so an acorn and this one is a little hot chocolate I keep thinking of it as butter beer as well because as we were talking about um, Harry Potter at the time I was like oh it could be a butter beer with the froth on top but or it could be a nice cozy coffee or a hot chocolate I love that one and then we've got a little woo, don't wobble little one a hedgehog this one's super cute as well little bobble hat oh that's not focused okay and last but not least this might be possibly my favorite from this set the mushroom isn't that pretty it's so cute So what I really like about these as well is they're quite... Yeah, that doesn't work at all. You can't see a thing. Anyway, that's why the picture's here. I'm going to leave it up for a bit. Which side am I putting it? Let's put it that side. Um, yeah, they're nice and light so they don't sort of drag down on um, your knitting or anything too much. So that's quite nice. I've been using them to keep those, my ends of my um, <laughs> hex in while I was making everything up for uh, the tutorial. Um, yeah, so that's the autumn set. They're so cute. And then they've done a Halloween set as well. So we have got... This is amazing. I think it's kind of become a little family business, I was saying last time. Look at this, the witch's hat. I think her mum helps do some of these details. Is that coming up? why is it not focusing because of the shine look at the detail on that hat with the little buckle and everything oh my god I love that I'm saving this for a bit until we get closer to Halloween we're not even in October yet are we although we might be by the time this gets out but yeah I love that then we've got oh and this as well look it's a potions bottle so this is your bottle of magical witch's potion 
I just love the gold, sort of this gold, however they get this gold on here. I don't know if it's gold leaf or what it is. Yeah, that's really good. Um, oops, dropping them. Then we've got a ghosty, a Halloween ghosty. Quite a nice, cute little ghosty, which is the kind I like. <laughs> don't like anything too terrifying for Halloween. I like cute Halloween things. And then we've got a bat. There we go. And last but not least, a gorgeous pumpkin. So that could go in the Halloween set as well, couldn't it, actually? Yeah, so I think those are, I think she's selling the stitch markers in sets. So there's the autumn set and the Halloween set. But oh, those are really lovely. So it's good to know people that make these things, isn't it? You get lots of nice goodies. <laughs> Right, well, I think that's all I've got to share this time. Thanks so much for uh, watching. And um, if you enjoyed it, I hope you will give me a little thumbs up because that's always really helpful for the video. And if you haven't subscribed already or if you're new and you would like to subscribe, that would be fantastic, of course. And if you want to get notifications when I post new videos, you can click the little bell thing and it will send you a little ding when I have in some new content to share. Um, so that's it from me. So I hope you find some nice crafting, peaceful moments and I will see you next time.